let's create a Mola inspired design with paper and paint. First, choose three or four colors of paper that you want for your project. I like to have all of my pieces of paper already cut the same size. Next, we're going to use a template or tracer to make this a little easier for us. I'm using this bunny tracer. Line it up along the edge of your paper and trace around it. Then you're going to cut it out. This is going to help because if you were to trace it in the middle of the paper and cut it out, you would end up wasting a lot of really good paper that you're going to want to use later. Save your bigger scraps to use in a later step. Choose the color for your second layer. I like to put some glue into a small cap. This will make it easier to use with a brush to apply onto the paper. It also makes it so that I don't end up wasting glue or putting too much glue on the paper. Place your cutout design on a surface that's not your paper. Apply the glue to the back of the cutout design, spreading it evenly so that it reaches all of the edges as well as the middle of the piece that you've cut out. This is going to help it stick better and not curl up or peel up over time. Glue your first cutout paper onto your second paper color. Position it still so it's near the edge so you don't end up wasting paper, but leave enough room so that when you cut it out, you can leave a border around the first paper to show the second color. You may find it easier to first cut out a rectangle around the shape instead of trying to cut the shape itself. Otherwise, it can get a little tricky to work with such a larger piece of paper and cut the shape out. So I'm doing that now. Next, I'm going to go in and cut around the design, leaving that space to make a border of purple around my pink bunny rabbit. I've set aside my purple scraps to use for later, and now I'm going to flip this over and use my brush to apply glue to the back side, just like I did before. Again, I'm going to go around all of the edges and apply the glue into the middle of the shape. Now I'm going to flip this over and glue it onto my third color paper. If you're only using three colors, then you would probably want to glue your shape into the middle of the paper, but I'm using four. So I'm going to glue it sort of off to the corner edge again, just like I did when I glued down the pink onto the purple. And then I'm going to cut around it and then cut out the shape to get a border. I've set aside my blue scraps to use later, and now I'm going to flip this over one more time and apply glue with the brush just like I did before. Since I'm working now on my last color, when I glue my bunny down or my design down, I am going to try to center it in the middle of my paper. So if you are on your last color, you would be centering your design pretty much in the middle of your paper. Glue it down so that it is nice and smooth and attached on all sides. Now it's time to use those scrap pieces to add some details around our central design. We're going to apply the colors in the same order that we used them in the middle design, the central design. So if pink was on the top for the middle design, pink will be on the top for the details. I'm just folding and cutting my paper so that I can get four of the same exact shape. So if I fold my paper so that it makes four parts and then I fold it back up and then cut out a shape, I will get four of the exact same shape that I can now use in each corner. You can, if you need to, first draw your shape with pencil before you cut it out. As I'm putting the shapes I cut out onto the paper without gluing them, I'm looking to see how big they are. I'm deciding that they're a little bit too big, so I'm going to stack them on top of each other and trim them a little bit smaller. 
I need them to be smaller because there's going to be other layers of color underneath them that are going to then make the shape bigger again. So the pink piece has to be the smallest piece. You can always change the size of your shape after you've already cut it out. Now that I have my pink shapes cut, I need to work on the purple color because that was the second color. There are two ways you could do this. You could glue each of the pink pieces down onto your purple paper from the scraps or whatever color it is that you have, or you could do what I'm doing and fold that purple paper into four pieces and then use only one of the glued down pink shapes to get the shape that you're going to cut out of purple and glue the other pink pieces onto the purple pieces. Either way will work and it's whatever one works best for you. Before I add a third layer of paper to the detail design, I'm going to check to see if the size is still working out. If it looks like it's already going to be too big, then I might not be able to add a third color. Mine seems to be that I have enough room, so I am going to add that third color of blue the same way that I added the purple. I've decided to change the direction of these designs compared to when I was testing them out before. So before I go ahead and glue them down so that they're permanently stuck to the black paper, I want to make sure I have them in the positions that I like, and then I'm going to use the brush, apply the glue, and glue them into place. There's still a lot of empty space around my central bunny design, so I want to add some more details. I'm going back to that pink paper from the scraps and I've decided to add some stripes. So I'm cutting four skinny rectangles from my pink paper and then I'm going to glue those skinny rectangles on to some purple paper to make a purple layer. And then from there it will go on to some blue paper so that it has three layers. It looks like I am not going to have enough blue paper to add a third layer to all of my stripes. So only two of my stripes are going to have three layers and the other two are only going to have two layers. But that actually works out okay because if it had three layers it might have been too wide to fit on the sides of the paper. I'm applying some glue with the paintbrush onto the back of my stripe layers and attaching those down to the base color. The collage part of our project is done, but it's time to move on to the next part which uses paint. I really like to use caps for dispensing the paint, just like I did for dispensing the glue, especially for this project, because we're going to be using some special tools like a bamboo skewer or the end of a paintbrush or a skinny paintbrush. And these little caps are really good to put just the right amount of paint in so that I don't end up wasting any paint. I'm going to dip the end of the pointy end of my bamboo skewer, or you could be using a toothpick, into first white paint. You could use any color you want. And I'm making little lines with it. I'm basically drawing with the tip dipped in the paint. And these lines are going to represent what would be like sewn stitches if I was going to have something that was actually made out of fabric and thread. But since this is made out of paper, the painted lines are going to pretend to be stitches. You might notice that I'm going around the outside edge of my collaged on pieces, my collage designs. And this is because if it was fabric, then that's where the stitches would go. It would be holding the fabric pieces together. So I want it to look like they're stitches and that's why it's going around the designs.
Now that I'm done using the white paint, I'm just wiping off the tip of my bamboo skewer so that I don't get that color white into any of the other colors of paint. And I'm switching to another color to make some new designs. Now the designs that go in the middle are freeform designs. So they don't have to necessarily look like stitches, like little dashed lines. I'm actually making little triangles with this blue paint. Um, so you could do triangles, you could do skinny rectangle lines. Um, you really can decide on what you want your stitches to look like. There are some traditional shapes that you do see in molas that include triangles as well as zigzags and even things that look like mazes. So I'm trying to use some of those designs, but you can use designs that you like as well. I do decide to switch to using a paintbrush because I'm having a little trouble with how skinny the skewer is in making my triangles. So you can decide which tool will work best for you depending on the kind of paint you're using or the shapes you're making. You might prefer using a skinny paintbrush or you might want to stick to using a skewer. Do whatever works best. As you're making your designs, remember that molas also have symmetry. Symmetry means that whatever happens in one part of the design usually happens in another part of the design. That could be on the opposite side, sometimes it's in four places. Look at different types of symmetry and decide which ones are going to be used in your design. I've decided to switch colors because I'm going to use a different kind of shape or design pattern. So I did my triangles in blue, but I'm using another color to make some rectangles. And these rectangles are going to go in a few places. Now I might have to put a second layer of paint on here if I feel like my paint looks transparent or not bright enough, but I will let the first layer dry and then make that decision. Sometimes it's easier to turn your paper around instead of reaching over it to paint other areas. So it's okay if you need to turn your paper around so that it's easier for you to paint, especially if you're making symmetrical designs. I am wiping off my brush before I change colors and I've decided that that blue looks a little transparent. It's kind of hard to see. So I am going to add a second layer of blue paint. And then after that, I'm going to add a second layer to the pink as well. As I'm switching to another color, this time the bright neon yellow, I am experimenting with using the end of the paintbrush instead of the brush part to see if I like how that makes marks on my paper. And I'm going to be using it to fill in the space that's remaining around the bunny rabbit with kind of almost like a maze or a labyrinth design. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to fill up the rest of my paper. I am cleaning off the end of the paintbrush because I've decided that I liked using the brush part better. So I'm switching over to the brush part to finish my maze design. So there's my finished design. I did end up using all of the colors to finish up all of my details. I hope you have fun making a Mola design of your own.